Hello, this is Gary with QBase Academy with a quick QBasics video on MIDI tracks. Well, what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Right, so what does that mean? Originally, it was a, a specification designed to allow musicians to hook multiple devices together if they uh, could send and receive MIDI. So uh, in 1983, it was agreed upon as a specification and synthesizer manufacturers, instrument manufacturers, started manufacturing keyboards equipped with MIDI protocol. So you could uh, connect two instruments together and play one of the instruments and the other instrument would also play. So that's essentially the, uh, the beginning of the specification. So fast forward to now, uh, MIDI is still viable. It's a, kind of a slow uh, technology because it's, I mean it was invented quite a few years back. And uh, a few things have been added and changed, but basically it's the same as it always was. So any, any MIDI instrument will understand MIDI messages and you'll be able to connect them together. You used to have to use a special cable called a five pin DIN cable, uh, which was a five wire cable with five pins. Uh, you, If you look at uh, instruments, you'll sometimes still see that connector. Now you can also do it over USB. Some devices will just uh, send MIDI over USB. I have some connected now. My my little Akai MPK Mini that I use uh, in these demos, and even uh, my uh, Yamaha uh, stage piano, my CP40, will also do it. So there's a wide range. Before MIDI, instruments had to connect with something called CV, control voltage, and that's Still actually a thing, uh, newer boutique style synthesizers, you'll have a CV port as well as a MIDI port. So how does MIDI work in Cubase? And actually, how does it work in, in most of the other DAWs? I'll show you. We're going to start by just creating a little uh, loop point. Uh, this is my shortcut, Alt, click up here, <clears throat> which puts my uh, beginning and end uh, points. And I'm going to now come down here and create a MIDI track. And just say a track there. So here it is, a blank MIDI track. There's nothing on it whatsoever. I would have to either um, put something on it by um, using step time or by playing something. And I'll, we'll, we'll get into that, both of those methods. I'll play something for now. But let's take a look at the track itself. Right now, it's set to have my MBK Mini as the input. If I had other MIDI devices that the system knew about, or I could just simply connect all MIDI inputs, and then whatever happens to be sending a signal will be recorded. So you could record from multiple inputs at once. I'm going to go back to my MPK Mini, and when I press keys, you'll see that uh, a signal is coming in. This is a MIDI signal. This isn't volume. This is just telling us that MIDI information is being sent. Okay? doesn't necessarily have to be notes either. Right now, I'm turning one of the control knobs on my on my controller and you can see that uh, it's going up and down as I turn the knob. So that's that's a different type of information that's being sent over MIDI. So just to show you that, that this is the indicator that MIDI is coming in, but we're not hearing anything. That's because there's no instrument that's been set to an output. Project MIDI doesn't really mean anything. This is one of my external instruments, which is not, uh, you won't be able to hear right now. So let's add an instrument. Let's go to devices. VST Instruments, and that's also F11, which is the shortcut. And I can choose to add either Track or Rack Instruments. For this, I'm going to add Rack. We'll get into Track Instruments in a subsequent video. So, add a Rack Instrument. I'm going to add this piano. And I do not want to create a Track because I already created one that I'm going to use. Uh, this would automatically create a MIDI Track assigned to the instrument. But I'm going to hit Cancel because I want to show you how to do it manually. All right, so we've added a piano, and we can hear it. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to tell it that that is the target, the output target of this MIDI channel. So when I've connected it, now we say the MPK is in and the piano is out. And when I hit the MPK, there, we hear notes. Perfect. So now we want to record that, all right? So I'm going to make sure that my uh, pre-count is on. So I have a count in. I'm going to turn my metronome on. Make sure I'm at the beginning of the track and hit record. Nice and slow. I'm going to play two chords here. Okay. 
when I hit stop. Uh, another track, by the way, it loops over and it'll keep recording the MIDI until you um, find the one you like. Uh, it actually keeps recording, and if you had lanes turned on, you'd see all the different versions that you'd recorded. But I just want this one. So you can see the notes that I've played are displayed in this track. Uh, and if I shrink it up even um, or expand it, we can kind of see. Let me play it back. Let's have a listen. All right, so we know it works, but it doesn't sound very, uh, in musical terms, it doesn't sound very tight, does it? It's a little loose, and that was intentional, so I could show you some things. At least that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. If I double-click this track, we can now see the piano roll notation. That's what this is called. We can see the notes that were played. We can actually trigger the notes here. And we can see how the velocity, how hard the notes were played. In fact, if I select a note, we see that the corresponding velocity is selected, and we get an info line that tells us information about that note. So remember, this is, this is digital information that's being sent to an internal synthesizer, or VST, or piano in this case. It could just as easily be going to an external device. I could be sending this to my stage piano. Um, so these notes, let's take a look at this note. We can see when it starts, when it ends, in the count. So it's, it's a little off, right? Uh, it's not at any zero boundary. The length of the note, what it is, the velocity of the note, which happens to be 100, which MIDI channel it went on. MIDI, by default, only allows for 16 channels. Um, so that's pretty limiting nowadays when uh, setups have many, many devices. Um, so there's a ways around that. You can uh, get interfaces that split the MIDI into banks, so you can have four banks of 16. The, the instrument that is called Halion 5 by Steinberg also uh, does the same thing. It allows for four banks of 16 MIDI channels, giving you uh, the possibility of 64 different instruments at, at one time. So but let's talk about Let's continue this. We've got... Um, an off velocity, uh, which so there's an on velocity and an off velocity. The way MIDI works is it sends an on signal, and then when you release the key, it sends an off signal. So it's not sending this continuous message about oh, this note's on, this note's on, this note's on. It sends a note on and a note off. If you have a sustain pedal, it will also send a sustain pedal on and a sustain pedal off. So it could potentially send a note on, sustain on, note off, and if sustain is still on, then you'll hear that note decaying naturally as the sound is designed by the uh, ADSR, or in a piano, you know, it just has a nice trail off until you release the pedal. And then another note off or a pedal off will be sent. That's um different information. The pedal is actually called controller information, whereas what we're looking at now is note information. We'll get into controller information in just a moment. So we have a lot of information about this note. And because it's recorded here as digital information and not audio, we can move it around. I have this note selected, and I can, with my keyboard, move it up or down. I can move it... Um, forward and backward in time by clicking and dragging. I'm not going to do that just yet. I could adjust the ends or the beginning. And also, um, using my keyboard, I can scroll through the notes. These are my left and right arrows. So I make sure it's all the right notes. If it wasn't, I can simply move the note. Right? If this was the wrong note, no, I've moved it. So when I play it, uh, it will play wherever I put the notes. So we're not fixed. <laughs> Very nice. And, of course, I can undo that with Control-Z, put that back where it was. And I can even add notes. If I want, if I like that note, but I wanted to keep the original, I could hold the Alt key, which turns on the pen, and put another note in. And drag it out here. And that gives us a little harmony on that one. There. Very nice. So, and by default, that came in at 100. I could increase it by just rolling up my volume here. And notice when I do down here, the velocity is changing as well. Let's do one on a single note to make it a little clearer. I can also drag this uh, velocity down. If 
till I find a point that I like. So you see, MIDI is very flexible. It's just sending this digital information to the synthesizer. Um, it, it is uh, just sending note on, velocity of that note, note off. And it's, of course, it's sending uh, what, what the note is. Of course, it has to. Um, I have some tools in here, uh, just I'll show you briefly, that allow you to um, tighten it up a little bit. You can see this note is before the beat. This is the beat here. And we are in eighths. Uh, so this is before, this is before, before, all right on the beat there. These two are right on the beat. Um, so if I wanted to tighten it up a bit, I have this uh, quantize. So it's quantize one eighth to uh, notes. And so if I hit the Q button now, they will all snap to the nearest quantize point, which in this case is eighths. Now we've got this very nice, neat, with no human feel. Maybe not so good for piano. Sounds a little bit too robotic. Of course, if you're doing EDM, uh, electronic dance music, or any electronic genre, you might like to have the beats right on um, and have other things slightly off. There's a lot of tools in Cubase about uh, this, how to quantize this, how to set uh, grooves and swing uh, beats, which you can do with MIDI, which we'll get, we'll get into. Actually, you can do a little bit of that with audio, too. So we have now recorded digital information, and we've uh, quantized it, uh, which I can actually, no matter how much I quantize, as long as I don't freeze it, I can always go back to my edit uh, menu and see quantize is the Q, letter Q. I can reset my quantize. I can put it back to the way it was when I played it. Unless I do this uh, advanced quantize, freeze MIDI quantize. Once you freeze it, you cannot reset it. It will be as if you uh, played it in that way. You can even, uh, if unless you do a freeze, if you don't ever do a freeze, um, you can always reset. Even if you save and come back to the project a month later, you can still reset that quantize back. Now, one other thing, if you physically move a note. Oh, I physically moved all of them. That's well, that's fine. I physically moved all the notes. If I go back in now and say reset quantize, nothing happens because I didn't quantize those notes. I physically moved them. And as far as Cubase is concerned, you move them physically. That's where you want them. Cubase didn't move them with quantize. You did. So that's how it remembers the notes. Now I'm going to do a control Z and undo put them back where they were, and this is how I played them in. One more thing about quantize that's really nice. There's something called iterative quantize. If I click this Q button, it turns iterative, iterative, <laughs> iterative quantize on. It says IQ up here. That means that instead of snapping directly to the notes, iterative quantize, don't know why I'm having trouble with that today, will bring the notes closer by a certain percentage, and by default, that is 77%. We can actually edit. Let's bring up the quantize panel. And, uh, oh, it's actually uh, IQ mode is 60% here. That's what it's set to. So that's a 60% iterative strength. What does that mean? When I hit Q now, iterative quantize is on. Same thing if I went to edit quantize. I'm going to hit my Q. It's going to bring them closer. So it's 60%. So these look pretty good. These look pretty good. These are pretty good. These are still, no, those are pretty good too. So that might be as close as I want it to be to tighten it up, but not to take out the human feel. Uh, and a couple of other notes here. Once you create a MIDI track, you can go to um, your MIDI modifiers. This also allows you to do some things very quickly here. Let's play the track. I can say transpose it here. Let's take it up one note or one semitone. There we go. Um, I can control the velocity here. Um, I can control the length of the notes. I can even randomize certain things. I could randomize the position in time. So if, if I quantize these things really tight, then I wanted to add in some flexibility to be random, then I could do that in here. Even pitch, I don't know. 
Uh, random pitch, probably not on the piano, but maybe random on a percussion sound uh, to, to play some. But potentially, let's suppose you had um, three snare samples on three different notes. You could uh, randomize those snares using this function. Uh, so you would just play one snare, but it could randomize to the left snare or to the right snare, the, the, those notes. That might be a good example of, uh, of using this uh, randomized function. You can also set a range. So if you wanted the range of, let's say, velocity, and you didn't want anything lower than a 50, uh, and you didn't want anything more than a 100, then that would uh, compress your that would compress your velocity. So even if you played everything in as hard as you possibly could, uh, it would only play at a maximum of 100. And if you played something really quietly, it would play at a minimum of 50 velocity. So that's how you could control that a little bit. So you have a couple of those. Um, <clears throat> this is a tuning, a MIDI tuning, which is a bit advanced. We'll get into that maybe. And it's very interesting if you do orchestral arrangements. We'll get into that in another video because I think that would be a good topic. Anyway, MIDI tracks, very uh, powerful, been around forever. MIDI's been around forever. There's tons of other information out there on the web. I just wanted to introduce it in Cubase here to, to give you an idea of, of how powerful it is. You know, you can, you can create a performance. It doesn't lock you in. You can go back and fine-tune it. And like I said, there's some advanced uh, parameters that allow you to create grooves. And, and if you have a groove... Uh, two instruments that don't quite groove together, you can even use this technique, these techniques to pull them in so you don't have to re-record something. Right, so that's, the, that's it for the high-level introduction to MIDI tracks in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I would really appreciate if you subscribe and like the video. Leave comments if you'd like to learn anything else or if I could improve these videos in any way. Uh, I'm always interested in hearing. So thank you very much, and I will talk to you again soon.